Bye. 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 Hey guys, what's going on? It's Carl here, back with an episode that's fairly new on my end. Just the other week, I got back from China, which was actually my first time there. I had the chance to check out the brand new Vivo Nex 3 5G. And for those of you that don't know, especially here in North America, you may not have heard of them, but Vivo has been making huge strides into the smartphone scene. They've got the second highest growth at 24% across all brands, and they're one of the biggest selling smartphones in the past couple of years. And as an extra little bonus, I'm giving away this next three, so just be sure to sub to the channel, leave a comment down below on your favorite feature, check me out over on Insta, and I'll be sure to announce the winner in one of my next episodes or on social. Best of luck to everyone. And the big thing coming to this guy, of course, it's in the name, is 5G. And although you don't have many options, especially here, Canada, the US, 5G is becoming the next standard in smartphones. If you've seen MKBHD's video, you'll know that 5G is limited by a couple things, the first being reception. Vivo tackles that, it's the first phone with six antennas. So no matter which orientation you're holding the phone in, whether it's portrait, landscape, you're always getting that high speed connectivity. And the second thing being battery as 5G takes a big strain on the phone. That's why Vivo's included a massive 4,500 milliamp hour battery in this guy, easily lasting you the entire day, even with those high speeds, this guy's got you covered. The second big thing, which I actually think is more important, is the display. And if you take a look at this guy, this has a screen to body ratio of 99.6. That is the highest screen to body ratio out of any phone that we've seen. And it uses the waterfall display, which is becoming a bit more prevalent, but it is more than edge to edge. It literally wraps around the entire device. And you can actually tell that up front. When you're looking at the phone, you actually no longer see bezels. That's how far the screen wraps around the outside. And even more so, there's so much screen that it doesn't actually have any buttons. On the right side here, you actually have built-in buttons to the display, and it does give you haptic feedback to let you know what you're pressing. There is a tiny little ridge on the end, just so your thumb knows where it's sitting, but once you start to press on that area, you feel that haptic feedback. You also get the plus and minus for volume control. That's the volume rocker. And on the top, just in case you're wondering, say the phone runs out of battery, they do have an emergency small power button that you can still press. That does the exact same thing, still turns on and off off the display, so you've always got that fail safe. And when you say compare that to the Note 10 Plus, probably the most well-known Android smartphone, one of the flagships, the next three screen crushes it. It's almost comparing, say, the iPhone to the Note. The iPhone's bezels are atrocious. When you compare these guys, the Note kind of dims in comparison, and this guy's got the truest screen to body ratio. It's kind of nuts. You gotta see it firsthand to believe it. And as with most displays, you've got a ton of palm rejection software because you technically are holding a bit of the display when you've got in one hand. I haven't found that it's triggered or misfired too many unnecessary touches. Unnecessary touches. The third major thing, which you actually kind of see and get a hint of over on the box and of course on the back, is the camera of this guy. This is another beast. They seem to throw in the biggest specs into this guy. It's got a triple lens setup. The main camera has got a 64 megapixel sensor. When you say compare that to the iPhone, which has been getting a lot of buzz, this guy only has a 12 megapixel sensor times three. Like I said, 64 megapixel beast. They also have an ultra wide as well as a telephoto. Being a big tourist out in Shanghai was taking a ton of pics. I'll let you guys be the judge, but I found that dynamic range was great. Color reproduction was also good. My favorite focal range still, of course, had to be that ultra wide cam. I'm a big fan of that. Let me know your thoughts. Front-facing cam, which is also how they achieve that full screen-to-body ratio. It is a pop-up camera, 12 megapixels, so it's the same megapixel count as the iPhone's back cameras. Take some pretty decent shots, but there's actually a cool sound it makes. Let's get this up by the mic. 
feels like something coming out of Star Trek. You can also choose to disable that if you want. Internally, just like the rest of the hardware, it's running the latest silicone. It is running FunTouch OS over top. It's their Android skin. Keep in mind though, it is an Asian phone, so you won't have full access to Google services, but that's something if you're in that area, you're kind of used to. I'm actually an Outlook user, surprisingly, so I was able to access that totally fine. Like I mentioned earlier, a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. Inside, they actually do have a 44 watt charger. So they focus solely on fast charging, getting this guy juiced up as quickly as possible. In-screen fingerprint sensor, that's 25% larger of an area to unlock the phone. And yeah, overall, just a beast. Make sure you keep your eye out for Vivo. Remember, you can win this very device. Just be sure to leave your favorite comment. I'm sure it's gonna be the display down below and sub to the channel. We'll catch the rest of you in one of my next episodes or vlogs. Peace.